In the previous video, we have discussed the roadmap as we move forward through Module 1. In this first lesson, we'll talk about Electron Theory. Hi, I'm Errol. Welcome to the Errol Electronics series, where we explore the world of electronics from the ground up. In this first lesson, the student shall be able to explain why there is a need to learn Electron Theory. Next is explain what is meant by an atom an element, a molecule, and a compound. Next is to explain the composition of an atom in terms of electrons, protons, and neutrons. And lastly, explain the balance of electrons and protons. So if this interests you, please keep on watching. This was the roadmap that we discussed on our previous video. Now, let's dig into electron theory. Here we will explore the reasons for studying electron theory and the various terms related to our topic. So, why do we need to learn electron theory? According to Malvino and Bates 2016, in electronics, all that matters is the outermost orbit. Since we are studying electronics, it is important that we understand what is meant by the outermost orbit referred by the authors here. To put simply, the outermost orbit is part of the atomic structure, which we will explore later. And understanding the characteristics of the outermost orbit, we will be able to decode the electrical properties of that atom. Again, outermost orbit atomic structure, electrical properties. Now, what are the various terms related to electron theory? Shown here are the four terms that are associated with electron theory. Element, atom, compound, and molecule. Now, what is an element? One definition of an element is proposed by Robert Boyle, saying that elements are substances that could not be reduced to something simpler. To add weight to this, Lavoisier asserts that it is the final stage of analysis. John Dalton brought something more fundamental to Lavoisier's definition when he asserted in 1808 that the specific properties of elements are derived from those of their constituent atoms. This is connected to what we established a while ago, the outermost orbit, atomic structure, electrical property. In other words, the electrical property of a material is derived from the structure of the constituent atom. And in Mendeleev's time, the periodic table is drawn, which arranges these elements according to their unique elemental weights. Now let's look into the periodic table. Let's say we have the element copper. According to Boyle, it cannot be reduced to something simpler. Basically, this means that copper cannot be made by combining other elements found in this periodic table. In other words, it is the final stage of analysis. Understanding the characteristics of its atomic structure, we will be able to understand its properties. We will see this later, so stay tuned. Lastly, copper is unique from all other elements. Since all elements are unique, each of these elements also have a unique atom. When atoms of the same element combine, it will form what we call a molecule. On the other hand, if atoms of different elements combine, it will form what we call a compound. And a compound is a molecule. To illustrate this, say we have an element hydrogen. This element has a unique hydrogen atom. When two atoms of hydrogen combine, it will create a molecule of hydrogen gas. On the other hand, if atoms of hydrogen 
combine with oxygen, it will create a compound known as water. Water is also a molecule, but hydrogen gas is not a compound. So goes the phrase, all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. Atoms come from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible, since early scientists believe that it cannot be broken down into smaller pieces. But later, this was refuted through the discovery of the subatomic particles. Subatomic, the prefix sub means smaller. Therefore, subatomic means smaller than atoms. So what are these subatomic particles. The subatomic particles are composed of the negatively charged electrons, the positively charged protons, and the no charged neutrons. Both the protons and the neutrons are found at the atom center, also known as the nucleus, in accordance with the planetary model of an atom. To illustrate this, the blue spheres in this photo are the electrons and the red and yellow spheres are the protons and neutrons located at the center. Notice that the electrons are traveling in circular orbits. Notice also that there is more than one orbit and as you go farther away from the nucleus, the orbit becomes larger and larger. Now, let us go back to why we are studying electron theory. Shown here is a tile of a copper atom found on the periodic table. Its atomic number is 29. This means that it has 29 protons in its nucleus. It is important to remember that for a pure element, it has an equal number of protons and electrons. This means that there are also 29 electrons traveling around the nucleus. Previously, we stated that electrons travel in orbits. What I forgot to emphasize is each of these orbits have a capacity as to the number of electrons that can orbit through it and is governed by the equation 2n squared where n refers to the nth orbit. So let's say for the first orbit, here our n is equal to 1 since we are on the first orbit. So 2 times 1 squared is equal to 2 electrons. Therefore, on the first orbit, the maximum number of electrons that can fit are only 2 electrons. Now next, for the second orbit, where n is equal to 2, 2 times 2 squared equals 8 electrons. Okay, therefore, a maximum of 8 electrons can occupy the second orbit. Since the first orbit, we have already 2 electrons plus 8 on the second orbit. So we have now a total of 10 electrons. Now there are 29 electrons for a copper atom. We still lack 19 electrons. Therefore, there is a need for a third orbit. So if n is equal to 3, 2 times 3 squared is equal to 18 electrons. Since we need 19 electrons, we still lack 1 electron to complete our illustration. So there is a fourth orbit and on that fourth and final orbit, we only have 1 electron. We call this outermost orbit the valence orbit. Well, the electron present in this orbit is called a valence electron. The number of valence electrons will determine the electrical property of an atom. Remember what we discussed previously. Outermost orbit, atomic structure, electrical property. For copper, it is a material used to create electrical wires. In other words, the electrical property of a copper atom 
is a conductor. If the valence electrons is less than 4, then that atom is a conductor. Since copper has only one valence electron, it is one of the best conductors found on the periodic table. On the other hand, if the number of valence electrons is greater than 4, that atom is considered an insulator. And the best insulators have 8 valence electrons. And for the purposes of electronics, if the number of valence electrons is equal to 4, then that atom is a semiconductor, which is our next lesson. To recap, we learn why we need to learn electron theory, outermost orbit, atomic structure, electrical property. We also explain what is meant by the following terms, element, atom, molecule, and compound where each element has a unique atom and when atoms of the same element combine it will create a molecule and when atoms of different elements combine it will create a compound we also emphasize that all compounds are molecules but not all molecules are compounds next we also explain the composition of atoms otherwise known as the subatomic particles the positively charged proton the negatively charged electron and the no-charge neutron. And lastly, we explained how the pure elements have a balance of electrons and protons as indicated by the atomic number. That ends our first lesson, and I'll see you on our next one.